fat is a, a very general term. It's like saying human. You know, this one human did this, so therefore all humans must be bad. You know? This is what we do with fat. We say that fat is bad. We call the entire category bad. But fat is many, many, many different things. And they're all very different. And they behave very differently and they have different functions. A fat molecule is um, it's kind of like a little tadpole. It's got a head and then a tail. So they call the tail a hydrocarbon chain because it's carbon with hydrogen. So hydrocarbon. But all fats have the same head. Okay, the head is always identical. It's the length of the chain that makes them different. If there's only one carbon, so it has the shortest tail possible, a little pug tail, that's apple cider vinegar. That's acetic acid. That's a fat. But why doesn't it act like a fat? Why does it act more like water than grease? Because the head is bigger than the tail. And whichever one is bigger is going to electrically define what that fat can do. The head is water soluble. The tail is fat soluble. So the longer that tail gets, the greasier it becomes and the less water soluble. So those long chain fats with like 26 carbons on them, they're the greasiest fats there are. But apple cider vinegar with only one carbon, the head dominates so it's water soluble. So it doesn't look like a fat, doesn't behave like a fat, but it is. And it's very good for you. Acetic acid in small quantities is very good for you. It's actually the energy source of your colon. If you get a little bit longer, like 10 carbons or 12 carbons, those are your saturated fats. All right, and then you're getting into the lauric acid like you find in coconut oil, or you get into the palmitic acid or the stearic acid, which you find in butter and meat. Um, and this is what the paleo diet they're all talking about. You know, you want lots of stearic acid, you want lots of palmitic acid. The coconut people are going to tell you, you want lots of lauric acid. And these are those shorter chain or medium chain, like coconut oil, they say MCT, medium chain triglyceride. Okay? Because it, yeah, it's, it's not that long. Yeah. You know, so that's maybe 12 carbons, 16 carbons. But the hemp oil is down here, you know, 22, 24, 26. So, because it has a shorter chain, your body can digest it much faster. All right? Again, the paleo people come in. They're like, eat these shorter chain saturated fats and your body can quickly use them as energy. The longer the chain, the more time it takes to break it all down. Okay, a saturated fat. People say saturated fat is bad. Again, that's a, that's a big group. That's like saying North Americans are bad. Okay, North America is a continent, different than Europe, different than Africa, different than Australia, but you can't say that everybody in North America is bad. You can't say that all of the fatty acids that are saturated are bad, because they all behave differently. Okay, you can think of like uh, the toys that you might have had when you were a kid, like Tinker Toys or something. You have like this wheel and it's got four holes in it, and you can stick these pegs in there and you can connect another wheel and then stick pegs in that. So a carbon has four holes in it. They're not really holes, but just so you understand it. A carbon wants to bond with four things. That makes it very happy. The first connection, the first carbon on there, is connecting with the head. Okay, that head again. So there's one. And then if there's only one carbon, it's going to connect with three hydrogen. Because it wants those four. It doesn't want any of them to be left alone. It doesn't like that. So apple cider vinegar has three hydrogens on it, on that one carbon. If there are two carbons, then the top one is going to connect to the top, two hydrogens on the side, and then the bottom connection is going to connect to the next carbon, which is then going to have three hydrogens on it. Okay? And if each of those carbons in the chain has a hydrogen in every empty spot, that's a saturated fat. It is saturated with hydrogen. That's what that means. So when you see an oil that is hydrogenated, that means it wasn't a saturated fat. There were hydrogens missing, and they bombarded it with hydrogen at high pressure and high heat to add hydrogens to it so that it becomes saturated. So that's what a saturated fat is. It has hydrogen on every available spot. Okay? And a, a saturated fat is really, really stable. 
Like this is why people sell coconut oil. They're like it's stable, it can't oxidize because there's hydrogen on every spot. There's no place for oxygen to get in there. So remember, all these carbons need to have four connections. Otherwise, they're not happy and they freak out and they'll find something to bind to. So if you have a missing hydrogen, say you've got a carbon here and you've got a carbon here, and this one's missing a hydrogen and this one's missing a hydrogen and they're next to each other, what they'll do is they'll bind to each other twice. Okay? So they've got the one bond already holding them together, but then they're freaking out here on the outer edge. They're like, I need something to bind to. And they're like, um, well, use my arm. Okay? So a saturated fat is straight because the carbon chain goes all the way down like this. But now, these two carbons right here, they're already connected, but they're unstable because there's hydrogens missing. So they're like, I've got to bind to something. So there's a weak attractive force and they start to bind to each other on that side. So now what they've done is they've created what they call a double bond. There was the, the original bond and now there's the bond on the outside as well. And that bond makes it bend, it kinks. So an unsaturated fat or a monounsaturated fat has one kink in it, all right? And because the bond between these two carbons isn't super strong, they would rather bind to something else, it's easy for oxygen to get in there and oxidize it. Oxygen can break apart those two carbons touching each other. Oxygen's like, dude, I can overpower that, no problem. But it's much harder for oxygen to overpower the hydrogen. So this is a vulnerable spot. So oleic acid and olive oil has one vulnerable spot, but it's only one spot. So the whole chain is not gonna oxidize. A polyunsaturated fat, which are the really long chain fats, the hemp seed oil, the, the EPA, the DHA, the ALA, those are polyunsaturated. They'll have a kink here, they'll have a kink there, they'll have a kink here, they'll have a kink here. They have kinks all the way through. So there's many different places that are vulnerable to oxygen attacking them. So that's why these fats are really unstable. They're poly, which means many. Unsaturated means there's hydrogen missing, so they bonded to each other. So poly points, many points of unsaturation. But the good thing about those fats, why people like those fats for heart disease and for arteries? Okay, if I put my arm out like this and I press against you, or I press against this wall, it's stiff, right? But now what if I bend the elbow? Now I'm a monounsaturated fat. I've got a little bit of flex in there, right? But what if I have all these different kinks in there? Now I'm really flexible, all right? And how do you want your arteries to be? How do you want the, the cells in your arteries to be? Do you want them to be stiff? You want them to be flexible. So when you eat fat, it builds the cells of your arteries. Okay, the cell membrane of every cell is made out of fat. That's what cell membranes are, they're fat. They're called phospholipids. Lipid means fat and phospho is phosphorus. And the stiffer those fats are, the stiffer your cell membranes are gonna be and it's gonna be harder to get things in and it's gonna be harder to get things out. So if you're consuming a lot of saturated fat, you're gonna have really stiff cell membranes. You're gonna have really stiff arteries. Okay, and that's a bad thing. So these polyunsaturated fats are really springy, okay, because they've got all these points they can bend. So it's really easy to get things in, it's really easy to get things out, they can dilate easily, you know, your arteries don't get constricted, they can move around, there's a lot of flexibility. So this is why they're promoting these omega-3 fats for arterial uh, decay, because if you're eating too much saturated fat, your membranes become too stiff. So, what does omega-3 mean? Okay, if you know anything about the Bible or Greek letters, there's the Alpha and the Omega. Okay? And God said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and I am the last. Omega means the last. So in the Greek alphabet, it's the last letter. So you've got this head up here. The first carbon that touches that head is the Alpha. Okay? And then as you go down, the last carbon is the Omega. So, if we go from the omega and we go up three, one, two, three, if we go to the third carbon and there's a kink there, 
That's an omega-3 fatty acid. That's what that means. The third carbon has this kink in it. If it's an omega-6, it means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oop, the sixth carbon has the kink in it. If it's an omega-9, the ninth carbon has a kink in it. That's what, those, that's what that name means. So it's, it's good to understand this so that people can't sell you things that they don't understand what they're selling. Oh, it's got omegas in it. What do you mean it's got omegas in it? That doesn't mean anything. You know, that's nonsense. Omega means the last carbon, and how many up from that last carbon is the first kink? The first kink that you come to, that's the omega number of that fat. Okay? And they're unstable because oxygen can attack them. 